Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, I want to say good afternoon to those of you who are joining me here on the East Coast. I also want to say good morning to those of you who are joining us from the Central Time Zones, the Mountain Time Zones, or the Pacific Time Zones as well. Uh, in addition to that, of course, we want to say good evening. And if any of you are joining us from across the pond in parts of UK or parts of Europe, and good early morning if any of you are joining us from parts of Asia or parts of Australia. Welcome to today's presentation, our power options strategy discussion, our tools discussion. Today we're going to focus on the various historical suite of tools that are available as an upgrade from the 20-minute delayed service or the real-time service as well. Now we're going to jump right in here. Before we begin every presentation, uh, we just want to review what is Power Options. Well, Power Options is a patented suite of search and analysis tools designed for self-directed options investors. Our tools allow you to search across the universe of options in less than a second to identify only those positions that match your personal risk reward tolerance. And we do support over 23 of the most commonly used option strategies. Once you have identified the positions, you can quickly compare the risk versus reward, of course, and do further research and analysis on the individual stocks or the individual options. We also offer a powerful set of portfolio tools to help you paper trade, track, and manage your positions. And we do, of course, have countless educational articles, help videos, archived webinars to help you get more familiar with the tools on the site, and also the various option strategies, management techniques, and adjustments as well. Now, Ernie Zarenner created the Power Options tools back in 1997. So there's a little bit of an error here. I didn't update this. We've been, been in business for over 17 years, actually. But everyone here at Staff on Power Options uses these tools to trade their personal accounts, myself included. So we have many more years of combined trading experience. Now, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Mike Chupka. I am the Director of Education here at Power Options. I've had the great pleasure of working with Ernie and the Power Options staff for the past 12 years. This needs to be updated as well. Uh, I do handle a lot of the coaching sessions and education on the site, as well as obviously the various webinars that we host and other educational materials. I have co-authored two books with Ernie. Now, I am versed with uh, most of the strategies, all the strategies on the site, and some strategies that aren't supported on Power Options right now. Um, however, I always want to be upfront. There are certain strategies I have never traded in my personal account. Um, things such as naked calls, selling a call without owning the stock or without owning another long call to protect it, um, leaving yourself open for unlimited risk to the upside. Uh, I don't do short straddle positions or short strangles because I don't appreciate and don't like the risk reward there of having a naked call and a naked put open essentially. I also don't do strategies such as iron butterflies or butterfly positions. I might do a broken wing butterfly occasionally, uh, but the butterflies are designed, of course, where you need to really pick a strike price to where the stock's going to be profitable. Sort of gives you that tent profit and loss chart. Um, if I was that good to pick uh, consistently where stocks were going to be trading at any given time over a 10, 15, 20 day period, I probably wouldn't be here. Uh, it's very hard to pick the strike price. That's why I don't trade those strategies. In any case, today we're here to discuss the use of the historical tools and how they can benefit you with your research and analysis and your trading going forward. Why is historical backtesting important? Well, it's a faster approach than paper trading. You can do multiple months of backtesting and essentially paper trading within an hour's time period rather than trying to watch the market day by day over the course of 30 days or 40 days or 50 days as well. You can also review what if scenarios after a position closes. Many of us will use stop orders in our portfolios to exit a position. We may also use mental stops where if I am in a covered call or a naked put, I may decide that I want to roll the call if the stock reaches a certain price or I'm going to roll the put if the stock reaches a certain price. Many times we tend to outthink ourselves. So if I've got a naked put position, Let's say I sold a 40 put uh, that expires this week, and uh, last week the stock dropped down to 39.95, and I said, well, it's going to come back, and of course I didn't close it, and today it's trading at 37. Well, I can go back in time, and I can see what was the best time to maybe adjust the position, and what could I have gotten if I had rolled the position. That's what the historical tools will help you analyze as well. The main crux of the search uh, historical tools, though, excuse me, is to fine-tune your search criteria. Many of you have been using Power Options. You may have taken one of the default searches that we have that you can use as a stepping stone to create your own personal search. 
where you already created your own personal search, something such as the covered call screen, uh, bear call credits, or something along those lines. And you run your search and you try to do your research and analysis to figure which position is best. The Smart History Excel tool, one of the three historical tools that we have with the historical package, will allow you to take your search criteria, run that at any given time in the past back to April 2006, and you can see your results over the expiration period. So if you run through a four or five month time frame and you come out each month with no profit on the 10 or 15 positions that matched your criteria, you know you have to make some adjustments. So you can go through different markets, you can go through different time periods, you can adjust the criteria on the fly to get better results, and then once you save that, you can use that search going forward as well. It can also assist you with management techniques with a manual process, and we'll walk through that a little bit as well. All right, so the three tools that are available in the historical package, the historical options chain. So you can view the chain on any stock, index, or ETF, any date back in time to April 2006. You can scroll forward in time to see the daily changes, weekly changes, Many of you may have positions where you're in a long call or maybe even a short call, a covered call position, and the stock hasn't moved or it's moved slightly, and you want to see, well, why did that my option increase in price when there was no movement on the stock? Okay? So you can go through and you can see the changes in certain things. You can view the Greeks day by day. You can view the implied volatility day by day, the implied volatility range, and so forth, so you can get a better understanding of how the options are moving in time with your position. Many of you know that if you click on any strategy in Power Options, you can use the search by symbol tool to see you know, what bull put credit spreads are available right now on SPX or SPY, for example, if you just trade one stock at a time or one index at a time. Well, the historical search by symbol will allow you to do the same thing, but you can go back in time. This will help you to identify which combinations work best over an extended period. Is it better to go with the higher percentage return or is it better to go maybe with the higher net credit? We'll take a look at that as well. And of course, the most important one is fine-tuning our search criteria in a given strategy using the Smart History Excel. You test your methodology over time. All right, so let's go ahead and discuss the historical options chain. It's pretty simple. You'll be able to review the changes on the options prices on a regular basis. Um, this is a good educational tool, I feel, for new options investors. A lot of investors may think that if I, let's say, bought a put option and the stock falls in price, I'm going to make a profit. Well, many times we might buy into a put on a stock that just had bad news come out and the stock fell, let's say, 5 or 6% in a given day. And the next day we open a put and the stock falls down maybe another 2 or 3% over the next 7 days, but our put doesn't gain in value. Why is that? Well, it's likely that we got in at a high implied volatility, and even though the stock continued to fall a small percentage because of the bad news, the premium is actually decaying on our long put because we paid into a high implied volatility, and now as the implied volatility goes back to normal, we're losing even though the stock is dropping in price. Of course, basic question, what was this option priced at on a certain day? If you want to just know what the uh, SPX at the money call or put was on a given day, you can quickly use the chain to do that as well. It's also going to help you to evaluate what if scenarios. So looking at the chain, as I go forward in time, and there's other tools we can use in the historical. But if I had traded, let's say, a covered call a few weeks ago, and it ended up uh, losing money, well, I can use on the chain to say, okay, at this point I may have looked to buy back the call. What would I have paid to buy back this call? And if I rolled the call down one month out or two weeks out at that time, what would the new premium be? for the other call. So you can compare that and kind of manually look at your uh, your information there to see would that be a good role opportunity, would it have helped the position, would it have minimized the loss, or would it maybe have turned the winner into a loser, or the loser into a winner, I should say, actually. So that's the historical options change. Let's toggle over now to power options and just run through some quick scenarios regarding the chain as well. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull up the chain here. What we're going to do is we went into the historical chain. Now, once you activate the historical tools, I simply just went into the change by chain, excuse me, by entering Starbucks here into the symbol lookup field at the top and went into chain. Of course, we're looking at the current chain right now, September 16th, 2015. 
let's say I want to go back in time and I want to see the puts, I'm considering selling a naked put position or how would a naked put position performed on Starbucks if I had sold a put back on August 13th. Once you activate the historical suite of tools, you upgrade to the historical suite of tools, you'll now see a feature here. Many of you may have this on your trial account if you're a Power Options trial member. When you click the drop down menu, you'll only be able to go back a few months. You'll be able to go back to June or July of 2015. But when we have the historical tools activated, we can go back as far as we want, as I mentioned, all the way down to April 2006. But let's say we're looking to do a naked put back in August, around mid-August. So I'll select August, and then we'll be prompted to select the date. Right? So I'm very simply just going to select the 13th. Now let's go ahead and click Get Chain. System's going to go out, take a look at our historical tools there, and pull up the chain of what we would have seen if we looked at the option chain on August 13th. We see they are, we're in the historical chain now. For August 13th, we have a small chain select and we're looking at calls and puts. Let's narrow this down a little bit just as we would on the regular chain. I'm going to look at puts only. I'm going to go about one month out in time. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at September 18th. So, and let's go, I'm sorry, let's go to the medium chain here to get a little bit more view. So, if I was looking to open a naked put on Starbucks, probably would have wanted to go a little bit out of the money. The stock was trading at 56.85. The 55 strike put, uh, let me change that up folks, I'm sorry, it's going to be hard for you to see if I do that, there we go. Our 55 strike put at a decent premium, midpoint of probably close to 80 cents. We've got the bid, we've got the ask, um, we see our current volatility as well. So this would be a 1.4% yield if we sold this naked put. Um, and we're roughly, our range out of the money is 3% out of the money. So if I wanted to be more protected, of course, we could go further out of the money for the 5250. And that, of course, would give us only a 0.5% yields. But for a 30-day trade on a naked put, I'm probably focusing on the 1.4%. Well, very simply, if this is what I was looking to do, how would this position have performed over time? Well, I can just simply go to the next view or previous. So I can scroll day by day just to see how this put would have changed in premium going forward. I feel an easier way to do it is maybe jump ahead three to four days at a time. So we'd have entered this on August 13th. If I jump forward now and I just go to August 18th, and remember of course we would have sold this put for about 79 cents or so, roughly would have been the midpoint, our 55 strike put, which was 3% out of the money. Let's go ahead and move over to August 18th. Our stock was at 56.85. On August 13th, we received about 79 cents. Let's go ahead and click Get Chain. All right, now let's take this down to the small chain a little bit. Now the stock has moved up in price to 57.83. No, sorry folks, let's go back to September 18th. All right, there, much better. The stock has moved up to 57.83. Had we sold the 55 put for 79 cents, three days later, we see it's only at 40 to 42 cents. So we've got about a 30 cent gain on the position. We go a little bit more forward, of course, we can just go to August, and we can just go to the 24th and get chain. Oh, now we've got a major problem, don't we? This was during that big decline we saw, so on the 24th, Starbucks is now trading at 50.34. Our 52 and a half strike put for the 18th, bid of uh, 3.20 to 3.40, so it costs us 3.30 to buy it back, so now we see we're in trouble. Did we have any warning signs? Let's go back previous. Let's go back to the previous date using the previous button. On August 21st, 21st Starbucks was at 52.84 and our 52.50 was around 129 to 143. So in reality, I know two things right now, I'm sorry, 55 put that we sold. And two things we would have seen here. Back on the 20th, stock was down at 55.81. Okay, so with our 55 put, we see it's getting higher and higher in price. It's moving up in price. Not much we could have done at this time, right? Because as we saw, we're getting close to our strike price, 55.81. We may have been using a 1% or 1.5% stop order on our position as our trading plan. That's the one I wanted to use there. There we go. So I may have looked to roll this position if the stock was at 55.50. We're at 55.81. It's not there yet. 
But as we all know with these kind of positions, as we go forward again, now there's that $3 drop. So the stock's at 52.84. Our 55 put has a bid of 268 and ask of 289. Let's just call it a buyback of 279 to make it simple. So remember, we would have sold our 55 put for 79 cents. Once it went in the money, suddenly, the stock dropping to 52.84, I may have looked to buy this back at 279 if I wanted to avoid assignment. Most likely, if I sold this naked put, I wouldn't have mind owning Starbucks at the time at a cost basis of 55 if I was put the position. But if I did buy this back at 278, or sorry, we're going to call it 279, so we'd have a loss of $2 on the position, could I have managed to get that back by rolling forward? So on around August 21st, we buy it back. And let's see, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, let's go ahead and see here. Our 55 strike put still about the same price, 285 to $3. Let's just say we would have taken a loss of $2. Now, what's our next expiration? We have weeklies out to the 25th, a week away from our strike on September 18th, October 2nd. Let's go to standard October 16th. So on August 21st, if I bought to close the 55 for, let's say, 279 and took a $2 loss, if I rolled it down to the 52.50 for October, we collect maybe 210, okay? So is this turning a winning trade into a losing trade? Potentially. Remember we took in 79 cents originally, had to buy it back about 279, so we can take that $2 loss, we can make it back and turn it into a 10 cent profit. Unfortunately, at this point, we're still 56 days left to expiration. Now, of course, if we go forward over time, let's go back to August, I'm sorry, let's go back to September now. Let's go to about the 4th of September, Let's get our October, oops, sorry folks, October 16th chain. And the stock's still at 54.28 on September 4th. So our 52.50 is now at $1.50 for October. But our 55 for September still would have been in the money at $1.58, $1.71. So not as bad of a buyback cost, but we can see here how would we have performed it if we stuck to our trading plan, what would our loss have been? Well, that's if you're doing it one stock at a time, okay? And that's for if you just want to see the call chain or the put chain. Just as you can do with any other tool and power options, the search tool, the search by symbol. If you want to see more information for your call chain or your put chain historically, you just can use that choose columns button in the upper right-hand side here. And I hit choose columns, and you can choose to view any of the Greek information if you wanted to take a look at it. Uh, Delta or Gamma, Theta, for example. Uh, if you wanted to look at things such as the time value change or the percent time value change over time, Black-Scholes changes, the high or the low for the day, the option last price, previous close, and so forth. You can select any columns you want when you're going through the historical chain, just as you can do for your regular chain as well. All right, so that's just a brief review of the chain. I want to encourage anyone, if you have any questions at any time, go ahead and send those in during the presentation. We'll be more than happy to take a look at those. Now, let's go back here just very briefly. We talked about the chain. Now we want to talk something a little bit more useful. If you're interested in analyzing bear call credits or bull put credit spreads, calendar spreads, for example, and you have a preference where you're just looking at SPY, SPX, maybe you're trying a new uh, strategy in your portfolio to manage risk by doing a spread position on one of the indexes or ETFs, for example, or if you just want to analyze what was the best spread I could have used, let's say on August 13th, if I was bearish on Starbucks, now that we saw that decline occur, if we had wanted to do a bear call credit spread on Starbucks, which combination would have worked best? What combination would best match your personal criteria, and historically, are the parity trades better? Okay, so this is in the search by symbol tool, which is also available in the historical packages as well. Now, let's take a look at the search by symbol just to review each one. To access the historical search by symbol or the historical smart history Excel tool, we want to go into our strategy tab. So I'm going to go into bear call credits. And we can go into the search, of course, the sample searches. 
You can go into the search by symbol tool, but what you want to go into when you're looking one stock at a time by strategy is we're going to click on backtest. The sub tab here for backtest. When I click on that, I have two choices, the smart history Excel and the search by symbol. Let's go ahead and use the search by symbol tool. And we're going to tell the system that we want to look historically just back to August 2013, or 2015, excuse me. We're going to go to August 13th. Now I'm going to set my expiration to the standard September, roughly 35 days away. I could choose to look at the weeklies as well, but we just want to go to September expiration. Keep it simple. So a few toggles here, just as you have in the search by symbol tool and power options. I'm going to go to more results, and then we just plug in our symbols. So we're going to type in SBUX for now. Let's go ahead and submit these settings. Now, the system's going to look historically. I'm going to just do this real quick. Let's increase the size a little bit. It'll be easier for you guys to view here. There we go. So for the more results filters, we have one, two, three, four, five potential bear call credit spreads that matched our criteria for the Starbucks position. All right. Um, and we can see here what are the first things I'm probably going to focus on if I'm looking at a bear call. Well, I want to take a look first at the probability. I see a variety of probabilities here. First two are at 56.7%. I don't know about you, but in general, if I'm looking to do a credit spread, either a bull put or a bear call, I naturally want to go at least into the 70 or 75 percentile. So I'm probably focused more on this range here. The combination of with the stock again at 56.85 on our historical date of August 13th, I may look to sell the September 60 put for 44 cents. I'm sorry, the September 60 call, bear call spread here at 44, by the September 62 and a half for 16. So net credit of 28 cents, but it's still a 12.6% yield based on the margin requirement for this bear call credit spread. The why does this one have the same probability of 79.2%? Well, it's because we're still selling the 60. But now we're combining it with a 65. We get a higher net credit of 38 cents versus 28 cents, but our percent return is now going to drop to 8.2%. Okay? So the reason I'm pointing this out is what did we talk about? The search by symbol tool allows us to compare what is better for our personal goals. Do so we want to focus on the highest net credit to boost our portfolio, or are we looking at the highest percent return? In most cases, I feel investors will be looking to do the highest percent return. The reason why I feel is that when you're looking to open any kind of credit spread or even a covered call or a naked put, you don't necessarily say, okay, well, here's a position where if it's 38 cents, I could sell 10 contracts, whereas if I only sold 10 contracts of the two and a half point spread, we'd only make 28 cents per spread. Well, in general, what you're more doing is saying that you've already set an allocation in the position. You're probably allocating maybe $5,000 to open a spread. Whereas if you did the 2.5 spread, you may be able to do as much as 20 contracts. And if you did the five point spread, you could do 10. So what gives you the better premium? 20 at 28, the better monetary premium. 20 contracts at a 28 cent with a 12.6% yield or 10 at 38. Okay, well that's what you wanna look at. But we're gonna keep these other ones here, these uh, lower, probability is 56.7, with stock at 56.85, we'd be selling the 57 and a half call, so it's only one strike, half a strike out of the money, and then comparing it to the five point spread, which gives the best net credit here of $1.06 and a 26.9% return, but if we sold the 57 and a half and bought the 60, we now have a return of 75 cents, still a good net credit, but it's 42.9% based on our margin requirement for the two and a half point spread. So again, you just want to analyze based on the money you'd allocate to one position, which is giving you the best monetary value. Would it be essentially 20 contracts at 75 cents, 10 contracts at 106? Now, what are some of the features here that we have in the historical tools for this position? Well, from the more information button, you can look directly at analyzing each individual position. And you can also look at the price history or link to the option chain as we showed before. What do those functions do? Well, let's go ahead and take this first position, this uh, fourth position here, 
the highest net credit at 106 with a percent return of 26.9% and that low probability of 56.7%. So if I decided this was the position I was going to do, I could use the more information button and I'm going to go into analyze position. Every time you use the Smart History Excel, which we'll talk about in a little bit, or the historical search by symbol, we can go into the Analyze Position feature. This is going to give us a breakdown graphically of the return on our particular bear call credit spread compared to the changes in the SPX and QQQ. And it's also going to give us a view of how each individual leg graphically changed over time in comparison to changes in the stock price as well. Now it does take some time to build the historical data here and draw the graph, so I'm just waiting for that real quick. As the graph's coming up, if you didn't want to look at something graphically, you prefer to see the price history numerically in a table, we could do that as well. So when you're using the different results, we could look at price history. Let me show you the two comparisons first. The Analyze Position feature, oh, I'm going to have to go back here to small view, I apologize for that, there we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. What the price analysis is showing us here is up at the top, we do have the basic chart just showing us the original price on 8.13. So we would have sold the 57.5 call for $1.22, bought it back, uh, sorry, bought the 62.5 at 16. The current price, the price on 9.9, why is this showing up? Well, it's because it's the maximum return on the position. As we enter the trade, the maximum value was on the 9th of September, where we could have bought to close our short call for 13 cents, and of course the 62.5 probably had a bid of 0 to 1, so we could have sold it for maybe 1 cent as well. But that was the highest return. The lowest return happened three days into the trade, five days into the trade. We opened it on August 13th. On August 18th was our lowest return over the trade so far. And right now our current return is about 77 cents on the position of the 106 that we expected to make. It would cost us 29 cents to buy it back today. Down below in the graphical sections, the first graph that shows on the position analysis view here, the analyzed position view, is a comparison of the return on your trade based on what you expected to make in your liquidation value. So the black line here is showing the percent return on your position versus the change in the SPX and the QQQ, the red line and the blue line. Now this is showing us just a four or five day, uh, seven day transaction, but if we click the bar down at the bottom, we can scroll over here and evaluate it over the whole course of the trade. What we saw from the basic view on the top was that on 818, we had the lowest return during the entire point of the trade. Okay? And we could see that here graphically. We started off at a loss here of about 2% just due to bid-ask spread. In the first few days, we dropped down to an 8%, 9% loss, and then it started to recover. Why is it important to analyze that? It's because I want to know now what happened on that time frame. Of course, we know the stock would have fallen in price, for example. We saw that earlier when we were looking at the chain itself on August 21st and then August 24th. The stock had really fallen in price and started to recover here. Um, that's why we entered in this high profit at that time, because we're in a bear call spread, remember. Let me just draw that off to the side. Bear call spread position where we had sold the 57.5 and, and we had bought the 62.5. Okay, so... During that time period, the lead up to that decline on the 21st and the 24th, the markets actually increased. So we can see that here is a little move up in the markets before they all fell. So our bear call credit spread got close to the strike price, and that's where we suffered a little bit of a loss. Would we have managed the position at that time? Potentially, and we'd be able to use the option chain to see what our cost would have been and what we might have rolled to if we got too close to that 57 and a half strike the stock first moved up in price. And down below, the second graph we're looking at here is exactly what we wanted to see from what I just mentioned. The lower graph is showing us the stock price versus the option bid and the option ask for your position. If you just did a covered call, you'd only see one uh, line down here. So our short call ask on around 818 
the stock price here had moved up to 57.83. Our short call was actually in the money, starting on about the 17th, went up to 57.74, 57.83, 57.59, and then it started to pull back. So we see here the buyback cost on our position would have been about $1.50. $1.52 on the 18th and $1.42 on the 19th. And we originally sold that position for $1.22, so it increased about 30 cents. Based on our management techniques and our trading plan, would we have rolled the position at that time once the short call went in the money? I might have. One of the advantages, uh, uh, one of the things I talk about in the Managing Your Spread Position uh, webinar uh, that's archived there in the Option Strategies, is I typically like to use five point spreads if there's a two and a half point difference, or maybe even a 10 point spread if the underlying security only offers a five point difference. And the reason why is if something happens like this within the first few days, I may be able to simply buy to close my 57 and a half call, we would have taken a 30 cent loss, but now I have room to manage to the 60. Okay, so I could buy to close my 57 and a half roll to the 60, and I still have a two and a half point spread now, and I only had to move one option instead of rolling the whole spread, because I still have 35 days to go, 34 days to go in this position. Okay? And we again, if I wanted to analyze that, we know that my buyback cost would have been 152. I can now go over to the historical chain and see on August 18th, what was the premium for my 60 call for September, and based on the buyback cost of 152, and the new premium I would have received for the 60 call, what would my new return be on that bear call credit spread? Would I have changed a potential loss into a winner? Even though, as we see now, if we would have held through, we'd still be in a profitable position on the Starbucks bear call spread. It just happened that the first few days after we opened the trade, it moved against us as well. Now, let's go back to our results. And I had mentioned that one of the other features you could do, you could see the individual prices by table by going to the price history. Okay, so the analyzed position gives you the graphical interpretation, shows you the minimum and maximum return for your trade over the time period you selected. And the price history, what that shows us, is just a straight table of the bid and ask of both options in our spread, or if it was a covered call, you'd see the change in the stock price, of course, compared to how did your option premiums change. And again, from this table, we can see that our position got into a little bit of trouble right around here. But shortly after that, a few days after that, back to uh, August 20th and 21st, when the market really fell, we were back in a stronger position. Our option was 50 cents less from where we sold it from. And then we saw the max return, of course, was on September 9th, uh, when we could have gotten back out at around 10 cents to 13 cents on the short option. And it was zero to five cents for the long option. So we could have probably closed this for maybe seven cents credit. And again, kept most of that original dollar six that we received on the position. And right now, of course, we're still looking pretty good. Stock has gone back towards us a little bit, a little bit of a volatility increase today, moved up closer to 57. So we went from 19 cents yesterday to 30 cents today. So just your basic table of the prices over the time frame you were in the trade. Now, what I may be doing here, though, that's just individual trades. If I had decided when I looked at the search by symbol that I wanted to use one trade or the other, I'd look at the analysis. But one of the things you're really probably doing here is we know that we had mentioned we have the spreads here with the probability we might not have selected because it's too low. It's only 56.7% probability, whereas historically we had much higher, higher probability using the 60 short call and the bear call credit spread of the 62 and a half. But let's take a look at how things would have gone forward. Anytime you have your results in the search by symbol, the smart history that we're going to get to next, down below, we can click Calculate Group Results. And this is going to show us the return for each position. It's a little bit more important in the Smart History Excel tool, but at least what we can see here is in comparison of those four or five different spread positions, which one has the best yield right now? So remember, our highest probability was originally 92%. By selling the 62 and a half call, and buying the 65, small net credit of seven cents, we had a 90 cent probability, 90% probability, excuse me. On today, the end date, well, it's just 916. We haven't reached expiration yet, but on 916, today's date, the net value is three cents. So we only have a 1.6% gain on the position, though we'd probably be expecting to have a 100% gain in the next two days. 
which was better for us if we close the position today? The highest net credit one we saw with the probability we might not have used, but the highest net credit of $1.06 on that five-point spread we just looked at, which today would only cost us $0.29 cents to close. And we'd have a 19.5% gain, taking in uh, 106 and paying back $0.29. Cents. However, on the other side, if we collected the $0.75 cents on the position, the net value, of course, is still about $0.29. Cents. Why? Because we're using the 57 and a half and the 62 and a half and 60 are priced at about a penny because they're so far out of the money. So right now we could, a net value of $0.29 cents profit, I'm sorry, that's not the closing price. The net value is your profit. So the closing price here of $0.29, cents, we see the two comparisons of return on the position as well. How would all of these five positions look for us if we chose a custom end date when we knew the position was bad, let's say on 819? What would our losses have been comparatively? So let's go ahead and select 819th as a custom close date. It's just going to show us all five positions and what their gain or loss would have been at that time as well. Mm. Okay, so the net value here, the buyback cost, we see our loss here had a loss of 13.7% on the highest return. Remember the 75 cent because it was on a two and a half point spread was the highest percentage return and the highest net credit. Well, we would have only given up about 24 cents of the position, a 24 cent loss, so a 6.1%. So this just you know, gives you a gauge of what is better over time for you personally, for your risk threshold in your trading plan. Is it the smaller spread with the highest percent return? Is it the highest net credit with a wider spread over time? Or, of course, is it something that you probably would have traded with a higher probability? How would have those perform? You see you have less of a loss here by going further out of the money. Still would have had a loss to buy it back but at the same time would have been a smaller loss percentage-wise if you did choose to manage it at that time. Okay, so that's the functionality of using the historical search by symbol. I get a lot of customers um, on power options that just like to trade spreads, uh, for example, or iron condors on SPX or SPY. You'd want to use a search by symbol tool to see the different comparisons, run them historically, calculate the group results, see which range is the best suited for your personal goals, um, is it the higher probability that suits you best? Is it the higher net credit? Is it the strike price difference? You know, comparing on an SPX, for example, maybe what's better for you, a 20-point spread with a higher net credit or maybe a 10-point spread with a lower net credit but a higher percent return as well. These tools allow you to do that and run that analysis for you. All right, most important though, last but not definitely least, the main reason that we created the historical suite of tools is for the smart history Excel. You know that when you're using power options in any given strategy, we have various search criteria set up for you that you can use as a stepping stone to create your own personal search. So I'm looking at the covered call screen. I'll see default searches such as uh, uh, initial values at the money. Uh, we'll see an in the money screen, an out of the money screen. There's a weekly covered call screen as well. These are the base criteria that Ernie and I would use when looking for a covered call position. The at the money, in the money, and out of the money, of course, would be what we would look for for that kind of scenario 30 days out to standard expiration. Uh, the weekly covered call screen, of course, we created and uh, put that in based on what we would look for in a covered call if we were looking to sell seven or 14 days out in time. And you might take a look at one of those default criteria and say, okay, I like this, but I have to shorten my stock price range instead of what they're looking at at nine to two hundred dollars in the search I'm gonna go five to eighty five dollars per share and I want to look at stocks that have a good MACD crossover or maybe some technical indicators or a higher positive earnings per share growth that's all great but how do you know that that criteria you changed might be profitable over an extended period of time and if you're thinking that oh I had this idea of if I'm gonna do covered calls anyway and I'm not married to the stocks so I just want to do in the money covered calls. Can't I enhance that return by doing covered calls with a dividend paying stock, for example? Well, will these results make money? Is it better to do that or look for stocks that have a little bit more volatility? This is what the Smart History Excel tool allows you to do. It works the same way as our patented search tool, but we're going to run things historically and then be able to calculate the group results. Let's take an example of what I just mentioned. So let's go back to power options now.
All right, so let's go back here, and we're looking at the search by symbol. I'm going to take covered calls. Okay, so let's go to covered calls, and let's go right into the search. Now, this is not how we access the smart history. We saw that before, but I'm just going to run a basic search for covered calls. And we're using the default here, the weekly covered call screen. We're looking for options that are 2 to 10 days out in time. We want an implied volatility greater than 0 0.20. Um, downside protection greater than 0.5, percent of fund change greater than 0.6, and so forth. For the stock criteria, we want stocks that have an average stock volume of greater than 500,000 shares per day, stocks trading above the 20-day moving average, uh, stock price between $50 and $200, uh, earnings per share growth of greater than 5, and not between now and expiration. Okay, that's just the default. But number one, before I do anything, I say, well, based on my personal account size, I know that I can only trade stocks that are between the 5 and, let's say, $90 range. Well, that's fine. We're going to go ahead and change that first. All right, so let's change our stock price to be between 5 and $90. Uh, in addition to that, we're not looking for stocks that have earnings between now and expiration. Fantastic. So my options criteria... Minimum implied volatility, minimum yield for downside protection and percent of funds changed, some option volume and open interest. I'm not going to concern myself right now of range in or out of the money. Okay, but with a weekly position, even with my stocks from five to eighty dollars, I may have a minimum requirement that I want an option bid price of at least let's say twenty cents for a weekly spread or a weekly uh, covered call trade. Excuse me. So I'm going to put that in as well. Let's go ahead and submit that. And let's see what results would come up today. Well, there's 360 total results. Whenever I run a search, or I'm thinking of testing a search, I want to get this list down to roughly maybe 35 or 45 results. Okay? I don't want to have them too high because it's more realistic. It's going to help me save time more if I get it into two dozen or 30 trades that I have to continue further research and analyze rather than 360 results. I'm not being restrictive enough in this position. So I'm going to adjust some things. Let's look for some good liquidity on the option. Let's bump up our open interest to 100 and put our option volume today up to at least 10 contracts. At the same time, I'm going to go back into the technicals. I'm going to increase my average stock volume to be 750,000 shares on average per day. And at the same time, I'm going to keep this stock price to be greater than the SMA 20. But I'm going to use MACD crossover. If you're not familiar with that, uh, I have some other webinars that discuss the technical indicators, but I'll go ahead and take a, a quick look at the MACD as well and show you what I'm looking for. But what I want to do here is I want to see positions where the MACD is just crossed positive over the signal line, so MACD crossover. I'm going to tell the system to show me only those stocks that have had a MACD cross signal in the last three days, within the last three days, so blank to three where the MACD has moved above the signal line. Let's run that search and see if we've narrowed this down any. Okay, perfect. 33 total results. There are some uh, different variations here. I'm sorry, different combinations on the same stocks. Alibaba, for example. We have various strike prices that match our basic criteria. Uh, Silver Wheaton's in there a few times, Wells Fargo, and so forth. We can clean that up. But what am I doing here? I'm just looking at a current search. Okay, so what I want to do now is we're going to save the search we just created. And we're going to call this weekly search with MACD crossover. I can't spell correctly. All right. And I'm not going to put in a description because that's descriptive enough. So let's go ahead and save this search. Now, why am I saving the search in the current search tool? In the Smart History Excel, when you select a strategy, we go into Smart History Excel to run your historical test. You can view historical tests based on any of your saved searches or even the default power options searches as well. So let's go into back test now that we've saved our search. I want to click Smart History Excel. And of course, we know we're in a covered call. That's what we're going to look for. My target date. Let's go back to April. Okay, let's go to April 2015. And it's going to load the available days. So here's one trick about the historical tools. Is it better to run it on the first of the month or um, at the end of the month? When you're looking at the days field, the number with the asterisk next to it. So here we see April 17th. This is the expiration. Okay, This was Friday expiration. So normally when I start doing a historical search, I'm going to select the Monday following 
whatever month I selected expiration. Yes, I'm doing weekly, so I'm not necessarily going month by month. I could start at the first. It's not a problem. But let's say that I was going to probably start opening positions after the standard April expiration and going forward. So we'll select April 20th. And now my save search selection, click that drop down menu, and I want weekly search with MACD crossover. Let's go ahead and submit that. So on April 20th, 2015, we're going to see what trades would have matched our criteria. And again, as we saw before, we may have some duplications. Okay, and what do I mean by duplications? Well, I see I have Mobile I and V in here a couple times, Delta Airlines in here twice, and Zoetis is in here as well. So when I want to calculate the group results here, <clears throat> there are only nine covered calls that match my weekly criteria. That's good. But we have different strikes available. So the 46 and a half for Mobile Eye trading at 46.38, the 46 strike, and the 47 strike all matched our basic criteria. Well, let's say I wanted to be safer. I was hoping to get assigned. I'm not married to these stocks particularly, so I'm going to make a change. And what I'm going to look for is the covered call for my weekly screen. I'm going to adjust my weekly screen on the fly here, and I'm going to go for those ones that are at least 0.5 to, let's say, 2% in the money. Okay, so I'm going to use the percent in the money field. I'm going to put it in a range of 0.5 to 2. I want to see Delta, Zotus, and Mobile Eye. All right, now on the fly, let's go ahead and submit that. Let me clear up those drawings for everyone. Okay, so I do have to make a change here a little bit. Let's just go slightly in the money, 0.1. Maybe Zotus was out of the money. No, nope. okay, there we go. So now I do have a duplication of Delta. That's okay, we'll accept that for now. But I've got my three narrowed down. Because I wouldn't open two covered calls on the same stock with different strikes. I'm likely just going to use one per position. We're going to show how to clear that up as well. Before I go any further, though, now that I've made this change, because I just want to see it slightly in the money, because I'm hoping to get assigned on each one, let's go ahead and save that. And let's just click OK. And we don't need a description. So it's just going to resave our search. It's going to call it user to find now, but it still can, it'll copy over with the weekly MACD search. That's fine. So we just made a change here. So we've got our four results. Let's go ahead and hit. Now that we have our results, let's calculate group results. So, on April 20th, if I open these cover call positions, how would we have performed over that time period? Well, it looks like it was a good time period, doesn't it? The mobile eye covered call with the 46 strikes slightly in the money would have been assigned over that nine-day period for 1.4% yield. We expected 1.1% on the one Delta Airlines, 0.9% on Zotus, and 0.8% on the other in the money covered call. What I can do now, though, to analyze the results, I'm going to remove the Delta Airlines, the one with the lower return. Let's just remove that out of the list so we see our three covered calls. Okay, so all were profitable during this time period for the max return. Stocks all expired or ended up above our call strike price. We were assigned. We made the max return. As we saw before, I could go now and go into the analyzed position or the price history for each one. Why would I do this now if all of them reached full return over a seven-day period? Because I'm just curious. I'm going to take the analyzed position for Mobileye. Not much of a loss. Okay, this one never got into trouble over that nine-day period, a uh, four-day period, actually. Never got into trouble. Only down about 0.3% on the day we opened the position on April 20th. That was just due to the bid-ask spreads. So this one looks pretty good. The reason why I'm looking is because I might have, on one of those three positions, there might have been a quick drop and then a quick gain. So I just want to know what I have managed the position based on my target prices. Maybe, maybe not. Down below, when you calculate the group results, of course, you're going to have a summary. So that four or five day period, three out of three were successful for maximum profit. Our average return was 1.1% for our covered calls that matched our criteria. And the QQQ return was up 2.7%, and the SPX was up 0.8%. It's kind of beat the SPX a little bit over that same four-day period. Lost out against QQQ. All right. Now, okay, so we know our results for our first series was an average of 1.1% return. Positions went to April 24th. We got assigned. What's next? Well, we got to go back. Okay. Oh, sorry, folks. We have to go back now. And we want to run this same search, the covered call, 
go back to April, and we're going to run it on the 27th, the Monday following that expiration. And we're going to use the user to find one for now because we made that change for the in the money, out of the money range. What would have matched our search criteria the following Monday? Three new covered call positions, Canadian Solar, MGM Barrage, and Alibaba. We're using weekly, so the average return here is only about 1, 1.1%. 1 uh, and again, of course, you want to make sure that you go into choose columns. I'm going to do that right now because I don't have the percent if assigned. This is a previous webinar we did on covered calls. We were looking at something else. But I want to add in percent if assigned, downside protection, and percent if unchanged. Okay, so let's go ahead and select those. Let's worry about that later. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and submit and save the columns and close the window. All right, so now the average return assigned is around 0.9 to 1%. That's what we expect with weekly covered call returns. All right, once again, let's calculate group results. How would our new weekly series have worked? Okay, well, made the max return on Canadian Solar. We expected a 0.9% return. Over that five-day period, the stock stayed at 36.26. We were assigned on the May 35 call. We made a 0.9%. Fantastic. The MGM Mirage position ended at 21.40, just below our short call strike price. We only had a return of 0.3%. We didn't hit the 0.8% that we met. And Alibaba fell down to 81.17. So in this position, we lost 4.1%. We're down 3.2% on the position. Okay, so two out of three of our trades were successful, only 67%, and we ended up with a loss of 0.7%. Okay, so why is that important? Now, I want to do some other things here. Okay, we knew we just ran this search from August, sorry folks, April 27th to our expiration date on May 1. That was our new weekly screen. So I'm going to go to Alibaba, and what I'm probably going to take a look at here is I'm going to look at the chart. So I'm going to go back historically. We're just going to go to big charts. I'm going to go back historically now for our time period. We would have opened it on April 20th, of course, to May 1st. And look at that. We had a sudden gap down. Let's just uh, go back five months here, six months. I apologize. Get a better view. There we go. Sorry about that. So our time frame, we would have opened the position here. And of course, we picked a bad time for Alibaba. Something was going on there. It had moved up, but then it weakened, and then we had a sudden gap up in price. We missed this because we got out of the trade right here when the stock was at 81.17. So this is our weekly time frame for the Alibaba position, roughly in that zone. Okay. So now what I want to do is I'm just looking at the chart. Was there something here that happened? Was this the earnings date? We know it couldn't have been because we avoided the earnings between now and expiration, so that wasn't in there. But we want to look at other factors, okay? So now what I might do is go into the other tools, such as the option chain. And this will go back to April 27th, the day we opened the position for the March 1 series. But from this view, I may want to go to the stock research tool now. And this is the stock research from April 27th. With the historical tools, you can look at the stock research. The earnings were on May 7th. That was the gap coming up, but our call expired beforehand. So there was weakness going into it, and I'd probably want to review the news now or anything along those lines. What I'm looking for here, is there anything here that might have caused me hesitation to enter the position? We had the MACD crossover. It was good. Um, the RSI was looking good as well. Volatility, of course, was within our desired range. I don't see anything much here that would cause me hesitation. So I may go ahead now and take a look at the news. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to see if there's anything that would have helped me to enter in a new criteria in my search so I could have avoided the 3.2% loss on Alibaba. Okay? The other thing I may do now at this point is just as we had mentioned before, let's go to the option chain. We would have bought Alibaba at 84.90, sold the 84.5 call, 40 cents in the money for $1.06. That would have given us a 0.8% yield. I may have looked to manage this covered call, of course, once the stock dropped below 84.50 or maybe even $84 per share. So we're going back to the option chain. Why? We opened the position on April 27th. Where were we on April 28th? Let me change this. I just want to look at calls only here. So we're not seeing the put value. Okay. 
So on April 28th, stock's at 85.08, still above our 84.50 strike that we sold. Going forward, big drop. Okay, so something happened. Well, it's a big drop, about $3 drop there from April 28th to April 29th. Why am I looking here now, though? We'd sold the 84.50 call, remember, and we had gotten about $1.06 for it. So this isn't bad. Bid ask of 10 to 13 cents. So I could have bought this call back for 12 cents with the declines. We took in 106. We're going to buy it back for 12 cents. So we would have kept roughly 94 cents from our original call. The stock's down $3. I know we've kept 94 cents. Now, with only two days remaining to expiration, what I've likely done, let's go out to May 8th with the stock now trading at 82.45. And I can see that the 83 call slightly out of the money, had a price of, and this is for the next expiration, for May 8th. The 83 call, let me get that back highlighted, had a premium, sorry folks, there we go, 261 to 267, so let's call it 264. So we took in 106, bought it back for 12 cents, so we kept 94 cents, we're going to roll down to the 83 strike for a premium of 264. Okay, so now we've got a premium in of about 354. We paid 84.90 for the stock, remember. So we got a good cost basis of about $81 and uh, 40 cents or so. That's a new cost basis on the position with the 83 call. Now let's go forward to May 8th. Assuming we would have sold that call, how would it have performed for us? There we go. All right. So now the stock rebounded to 87.06. We had the 83 call, so we would have been assigned, but that's okay. We had a cost basis of $81 on the position, 81.40. We got out at 83, so we made $1.60 on the position for a two week trade. Because remember, we had to manage it going forward. And of course, if you wanted to continue to manage this position, we could go back to the chain. Maybe as the stock moved above 83, a little bit later on with that large gap, would you have rolled the call then or just likely take an assignment? And we saw that on the chart there going back. If we rolled down early, when we had that $2 decline, right about here would have been our $2 decline. So if we rolled down from the 84.50 to the 83 call for the 8th of May, which is over here now, we were still looking pretty good and we had hedged our bets, even with the stock trading around 80, we lowered our cost base down to 81.40 and with the gap up here in two days remaining, we probably just would have let ourselves get assigned. Whereas we saw that if we held the position alone to the fourth, we would have lost 3.2% on the position because of the decline down to 81 if we kept the 84.50 open. But just looking at the chain real quickly, analyzing what our buyback cost would have been and what we could get for the new premium going forward, Within a five-day period, we changed a losing trade to a winning trade. We would have had a profit, still only been a 14-day trade. So that's the benefit of what the historical tools can do for you. What we just did is not only show how our results would have performed, what things we might have looked for to make a change if we have consistent losers on our field, and then, of course, using the chain from the historical view to see how we would have managed a potentially losing trade into a winning trade with only adding five days left. So, you know, for those of you that are currently just on the 20 minute delayed service, the real time service, um, or you're on a trial, start playing around with the smart history tool. You have access to about two to three months of back data. So you can use your save search, you can view the historical chain, you can just go back a few months, get comfortable with it, and then seriously consider if you want to test your parameters and see how they would have performed, make adjustments to your search with the confidence knowing how they had performed over time then that's how you, why you want to upgrade to the historical suite of tools to help you with your search criteria and better manage the search criteria as well. And again, once you uh, upgrade there, the tools that are available, you can simply just put your stock symbol into the chain. And when you go into any chain, of course, as we saw with Starbucks, you still have, of course, all the features you have with the current chain, but now you can go back in time all the way back. If you want to test your search criteria for, let's say, positions in the disastrous markets, you can test how they would have performed from 2008 to 2009, for example, as well. And then look manually to see what management techniques you might have used based on the premium available. 
but then to access the historical tools in a given strategy. If I want to run the search by symbol historically or the smart history Excel and naked puts or bull put credits, we go to the strategy tab, we click on back test, and then we can select to do the smart history Excel or the search by symbol also. All right, so once you click that back test tab, that's how you can navigate into those different tools. All right, well, how do you access, how do you get access to the historical suite of tools? Well, it's an upgrade from the 20 minute delayed or the real time service and power options. Uh, it's an increase of only $40 more per month to have access to about nine years of back testing capability. Um, so the 20 minute histo the 20 minute delayed, of course, is $60 per month right now. It gives you access to all the search tools, the portfolio with 20 minute delayed quotes. If you add the historical, it just goes up to $100 per month, and you can spend time back testing. So even if you would just want to do spend 10 to 15 days back testing, it's only going to cost you $40 to run through some of those searches. If you're currently on the real time at $100 per month, the real time subscription to Power Options, if you upgrade to the historical, it's $140 per month. And of course, if you wanted to go to the annual subscription, there's still discounts for the 20 minute plus historical and the real time plus historical. It's called the uh, professional level of service. Now, if you have a few, one or two searches created, or you have one search that you've created in Power Options and you're using on a given strategy, whether it's covered calls, naked puts, uh, buying calls, buying puts, or credit spreads, for example, there is another service that we offer that can do something a little bit better for you. It's called the Strategy Testing Service. Now, what this is, is that if you purchase the Strategy Testing Service, it's $50, uh, but if you purchase the Strategy Testing Service, We'll send you an email. We'll ask you what saved search you want to use in your Power Options account. Did you want to use stops based on fundamental or technical indicators, the stock price, or the option price? And what time frame do you want to run your search? Okay. And, uh, oh, sorry, folks. What we'll do here, let me go back very quickly here to Power Options, and I'll just show you some of the description here and how to access it. Here we go. All right. So if I go into the main Home tab, and we go into the store. I'm going to go to the power store here. Under the strategy testing and optimization tab is the strategy testing service. All right. Now, what this will do, we'll send you an email. If you purchase this for $50, we'll send you an email. We ask you some specifics. And then Ernie will like you give a phone call or send you a personal email uh, to, to fine tune down. So what we're going to do is take your safe search and we're going to say what types of stock triggers would you like to use? Stock percent change, option percent change, uh, stock price relative to a moving average or index, uh, sentiment rating based on the market sentiment tool or expiration of the option. Okay, And we have this service available for covered calls, naked puts, bear calls, bull puts, um, buying calls, buying puts, and just even uh, long stocks right now. So what Ernie's going to do, what Ernie and I will do, we're going to take your safe search, we're going to apply your triggers, and we have a tool here now that we're using that will allow us to do, we can set a time frame and say April 2006 to today, or April 2010 to today. We'll run your search with the stops in place and the triggers, and it'll give us a report of what you would have made per month, what positions were profitable, gains and losses. If you started out with an account size of 10,000 or 50,000 or 100,000, what would your ending portfolio value be at the end of each month or at the end of that time frame and then we'll give you some ideas of course on what you may want to consider to help get better results based on the search you've created and saved on power options and what trigger points you would have used now we're not going to do uh, for lack of a better term this is just one report for one of your safe searches We'll work with you to give you some ideas and then, of course, just show you what triggers uh, you'd want to use. We'll run that report for you, and it takes only about three hours. So rather than doing a manual screen with the historical suite of tools, we can do this for you for just a price of 50 bucks um, in a couple of hours. Now, all that being said, we do offer another service, which is much more expensive, and that is the search strategy optimization. This is $500. What we do here is we take your search criteria and we run the basic search that we just mentioned for the $50. But then Ernie and I are going to spend time going through adjusting your criteria ourselves, adjusting the exit triggers, providing you with original performance report and how 
we, our improvements would have done, we're gonna try to maximize the return based on the strategy you're looking at and the basic search criteria we used. But we usually spend close to about seven to eight hours of time, maybe more, working with these reports, analyzing, adjusting the criteria, seeing which performs best for you. And then once that's done, we can give you the search criteria that were optimal for the strategy we're using and the basic construct of what you were looking for in the strategy, meaning if you're in covered calls. If you gave us an in-the-money search, hey, we'd keep the in-the-money part and we'd keep what you want to see for the stocks. But we're going to make other tweaks to help you maximize it to try to get you better results. Then you can take that search criteria going forward, doing exactly what you could have expected historically, and then moving forward with a little bit more confidence in the search criteria. But because we typically spend, on average, probably eight and a half to nine hours with one customer report, it is more expensive. It's $500 of value because we're helping you potentially make a lot more money by fine-tuning and helping you customize your search criteria. It's no guarantee that you're going to make a profit. The markets are going to do what they're going to do, but it is a fantastic feature if you need some help and you really want to narrow down your search criteria. So again, you can access those in the store. Um, if you have been using a search in Power Options, a criteria, and it's not getting you what you want, or you want to know maybe it did work two months ago, but it's not working now, how would it have done more historically? That's what the $50 strategy testing service is for. We'll take your criteria, we'll help you set up the triggers, we'll run that report for you. You'll have it probably within 24 hours of when you sign up for the strategy testing service. Right? But again, if you wanted to do it manually, and you want to spend some time doing manually, that's nothing, there's no problem there, we've got that covered. You can just use the standard historical tools as well to perform your own searches, analyze them month by month, see what your turn would have been, and start tweaking your own criteria. Um, one of the things that uh, I want to mention about the usefulness of the historical tools for me personally is a lot of times, uh, we've mentioned earlier in the presentation, a customer will call up and say, I entered into X position. Let's say, for example, I bought a call, the stock moved up, and I lost money. Why? And the first thing I do is go into the historical chain, and I pull up the option that they traded and the date that they did it, and I take a look at the implied volatility and some of the Greeks and some of the other factors, and I just start going through day by day to see how the, what changed in the option. The stock moved up 3%, but the option actually declined. Why? In the back of my mind, I know what likely it is. It was likely after an event that they bought the call or the put, the implied volatility was increased three or four days or five days after when the stock started to move more normally, the implied volatility went back to normal, they lost all that extrinsic value. So the volatility crush, and even though the stock's moving up, they're still losing money on the position. Um, wide bid ask spreads, for example, we'll go back and see why did one option for a four or five day period just suddenly increase with wide bid ask spread, where normally it's only 20 to 30 cents off. So a lot of the questions that I answer for customers when they call in about their positions, things that didn't go right for them, things that did go right for them, but they want to help match um, those kind of same results with similar stocks or similar options, I'm using the historical tools probably three to five times a day. But you can use them yourself with your own positions to help you better fine-tune your search criteria, evaluate what your gain or loss would have been had you adjusted a position at a given time uh, rather than waiting to expiration, using the option chain as we saw to see what maybe our buyback cost would have been versus what our new premium would be if we had rolled the position earlier rather than holding it to expiration. Okay? So they're very valuable tools, and I think you'll find them very valuable as well. But again, most of you that are current members of Power Options, whether you're on the trial or you're on even the 20-minute delayed subscription, you can start playing around with those. And as I mentioned, I believe you'll have access to the historical chain, which is two to three months of data. You'll have access to the Smart History Excel in any strategy, which is two to three months of data, and the historical search by symbol tool as well. Well, uh, I didn't see any questions come in during the presentation. If anyone does have any questions at any time about the historical suite of tools, how to use them, or if you're interested in that strategy uh, testing service we saw, please feel free to give me a call or contact us at any time. You can just simply send us an email to support at powerop.com. Remember, you can also call us uh, toll-free during market hours if you live inside the U.S. at 877-992-7971. If you live outside the United States, of course, you can reach us at 302-992-7971. And there's contact links in the bottom of every Power Options page. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining me today for our Power Options Tools discussion on the historical suite of tools. Uh, I hope you all have a profitable remaining two days to the standard September expiration if you still have positions open uh, that are going to expire on Friday. Remember, Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, of course, we're always going to be hosting our uh, Power Options Radioactive Trading Open Forum Q&A session. You can register for that right at the uh, webinars page, of course, or on Power Options. Um, so that's just the presentation we do every Friday. We don't have any planned material. Um, you just uh, show up with your questions. We answer all the questions on the fly. Today's webinar on the historical suite of tools will be posted to the archives likely at around 2.30, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Remember to access the archives. You can just go to www.poweropt.com slash webinars. Oh, sorry, folks. Webinars.asp. There we go. Good link. And uh, this will be under the Power Options Tools section. You'll see one for the historical suite of tools. This will replace the existing one as well. So this presentation will be uh, posted to the archives later this afternoon, and I will send everyone an email when the webinar is posted. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me. Have a fantastic week. Have a profitable week as we head to uh, September expiration. We'll see everyone soon. Good night.